So we're at driveatank.com world headquarters today. Um, they got a bunch of old army tanks that you can drive and they also have a shooting range. So I guess we're gonna shoot some guns today. I don't know if I am, it makes me kind of nervous, but I know John is. Well, is this like gas? Must be some sort of old gas tank or something or whatever. They Look at that, bombs, you got this army guy here, he's just not happy. And shell casings, got a few mortars, all sorts of different types of mortars and shells and missiles and bombs, I don't even know what the hell those are. Those are tank missiles, I know that. This here is a really big bomb, very exciting. And then you have landmines, uh, mortar, mortar shells, pretty cool. And then you have the anti-tank missiles up here. Cool. This is a 24 karat. 24 karat gold Desert Eagle Call of Duty 4 handgun right here. Here at the Driver Tank World Headquarters we take pride in our uh, exotic firearms you might call them. Most of them range anywhere from 22s up to 50 cals, even a 40 millimeter. If you can dream it, we've probably got it. We've got the 1919 Uzi Thompson, Romanian AK, another 1919 Spade Grip formation as you'd see in the belly gun of like a V17, current issue M249 saw, that's a US squad automatic weapon, 223, feeds belts or mags. If you're a Call of Duty fan, the RPD makes its uh, debut in Modern Warfare. FNFAL, huh. um, if you're still a Call of Duty fan, I hate to break it to you, but the FAL is really a full auto gun. I don't know what that means. In the game, it's not. In the game, it's somewhere out <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, this is a uh, Eckler and Koch MP5 9mm sub gun. Entry gun. This came off of a turn in from a SWAT team. So that goes for my same service. That's cool. M4 A1 carbine, standard US issue combat rifle. Uh, US Lobby Krinkov, which is a short barrel AK. This is something you'd uh, use for vehicle or airborne operations. Folding stock, like I said, short barrels, easy to get in and out of tight places. Russian World War II PPSH-41. That's the world's fastest firing submachine gun of World War II. One of the first, in fact. Fires about 950 rounds a minute. Typically fed from a drum. I'm just scared I'm going to shoot the gun and then it's, I don't know, like Ooh, it's going to be too powerful or for me and I'll drop it. or no, no, Controlled no. environment. So, okay, here's the deal. Is everybody thinks machine guns are going to kick. Oh, I saw it in a movie, I saw it on TV. The problem is, is if... They kick that bad, who would buy them? You yeah. know, there's obviously there's a need for manufacturers to create machine guns that are controllable. And those are the ones that are gonna start you off. Okay. Maybe just like a baby gun, a little gun. Just because it's little doesn't always mean that it's not gonna kick. <laughs> okay. Well either gun. way, I think that I should learn to shoot a gun just in case there is a zombie apocalypse. But yeah, like yeah, I mean like look at all these guns them. here. I mean this is the place to raid if there is a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> So real quick, before we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about driveatank.com. Driveatank.com is a Minnesota-based, family-owned company. We operate out of, like I said, southern Minnesota. Um, we're a unique company to, to the world, really. We're the only uh, public place where you can drive tanks and shoot machine guns in the world. And we're the only people in the United States that allow you to drive tanks. Um, there's been other people in the business, small time. We're the first people that took it and created a full-time business out of it. We do anything from entertainment adventures. If you just want to come and drive a tank, we do bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, birthday parties. Corporate. Bachelor party in a tank? Yes, it's not right. only tanks, though. <laughs> we also have a armored Yeah, we got a Do, like, strippers jump out of your army tanks? Well, only that's, that's all negotiated ahead of time. It's all for a cost. If you want strippers in the tanks, we can do that. <laughs> know it, but hey, I've never, uh, never not... You keep an open mind? Days. That's right. <laughs> Um, we also do corporate entertainment. Instead of going golf and bring your corporate uh, executives here and drive tanks and shoot machine guns for the day, or we do uh, corporate team building. I have a group of uh, psychologists and education PhDs that'll work with you to put together the perfect team building package to help boost your uh, corporations out. Very teamwork. cool. Yeah. That's right. It's all about teamwork. Tank driving is all about teamwork. It's, it's probably the most badass vehicle. It requires four people to drive it. Essentially, the driver is almost blindfolded, and he leaves it up to his commander to tell him where to go. And the gunner also has limited visibility, so he relies on his commander to tell him what to shoot at. And the loader, he's a little bit like a mushroom. He's stuck in the dark and fed bullshit and told what to put down the barrel. <laughs> but they make a great team. Look at your... I know, I'm in awe. What's, uh, so do your tanks shoot anything? Or is they take all the firing stuff out? 
Well, my tanks were, uh, my, I'll start from the beginning. We operate British tanks from the country of England, and the reason for that is because United States military tanks are not obtainable by U.S. citizens. Uh, if you live in other countries and happen to finagle a U.S. tank, they'll just let you have it. However, in the United States, they consider all their tanks government property, and they always will be. Now, there are a few exceptions, ones that were sold by surplus and this and that. And there are loophole tanks, but a U.S. tank is going to start a Stuart light tank, which is very small, but the size of a van, is about a $200,000 vehicle. A uh, Sherman, something that's getting bigger, about half the size of my Chieftain, is about $65,000. And an M60, which is getting close to my Chieftain, it's still not quite as big, it's about $650,000. That's why we have British vehicles. What, now, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but what would be the price on that in like an M1 Abram? I, I mean, you'd have to cost a million bucks. I don't know. Something like that? I don't know exactly how much they've got to do. A lot of those Abrams, they've, they bought once and they just keep rebuilding and rebuilding. Yeah, there's and rebuilding. a shop in Ohio or something. Yeah. Like that. They just, yeah, General Dynamics got a headquarters. Pump them out. That's all there is to it. They don't change. Tank technology really doesn't change much anymore. And to be honest, I don't think that the tank, other countries aren't evolving. You know, a lot of your third world countries are stuck with T-72s, T-80s, T-90s maybe, and... No stand a chance. You know, a tank, is, if somebody's got a whole bunch of tanks, we're not going to probably send a whole bunch of tanks after them. You're going to use cruise missiles or air, air bomber. Um, tanks work good nowadays. They're more of an infantry support vehicle. As simple as you got an infantry battalion, and there's a building over there, and they want the building to come down. Well, the easiest way to do that is just have an armored gun driving around blowing up the buildings. So they're really not a frontline combat vehicle. You don't see the tank battles that you did during World War II. Yeah. Things change. Different type of warfare. Yeah, but they're still used, like I said, they're still uh, infantry support. They started out as infantry support, they kind of went to their own deal, and then they're back in infantry support. So it's, everything has its place. Still have very large guns. Yeah, That'll and uh, job done. so when our British tanks are imported, there's uh, some laws that say or state that you cannot import a live destructive device. So our guns are cut upon importation. I have uh, reactivated them with a settling and oxygen cannon simulator. So for our TV productions <laughs> and movies and things like that, we can shoot fireballs and we can simulate cannon fire. There was a movie. You've had movies shot out here? We did, uh, yeah, we did a show for uh, CMT, Country Music TV. Uh, we did one for Discovery Channel. We did one for G4, Attack of the Show. We did one for Travel Channel. What, uh, oh, very cool. Discovery We've been on G4 show, too. They, they talk about like tank battles and they look at old tanks and stuff and how they rebuild them. Uh, the show we were on for Discovery was Recreation Nation. It okay. was a group of people, or Dave Murdell, a comedian from Minnesota. Yeah. He went around and just did wild and crazy things. He wrestled alligators, you know, and cool. all kinds of different things, and drove tags. Yeah, well, that's kind of what we do, just on a smaller scale. Where it's hopefully... It's what? Well, we go around and just do crazy things. Okay. <laughs> Not wrestle, we haven't wrestled alligators yet, but I guess we'll have that. So <laughs> <laughs> I get to wrestle the alligators? All right. Yeah, go wrestle a gear, I guess. I can so, take it. With no further ado, let's shoot some machine guns. guns. Yeah. Ah, I don't have a press. That's what I'm talking about. Use bullet casing. 